So now we want to go ahead and save these shaders so that we can access them in any Blender file. So let me go ahead and show you how to do that. First thing I'm going to do is save my file and then I'm going to go into edit, left click preferences, left click add-ons, search for node and I'm going to make sure the node presets add-on is enabled. This is built into Blender so you don't need to worry about downloading anything. Then I'll left click these three bars and left click save preferences. I'll X this Blender preferences to close it and now we can go ahead and start turning these into group nodes. So I'm going to go into my solid view and I'm going to turn off all of my modifiers just to speed things up. If you don't have this final project you can follow along with the last tutorial. Now we can literally save anything as a preset node so we could even save this gradient here or any of these shaders or the whole shader in its entirety but I'm going to show you just how to save a few of these just now. I'm going to left click my principal BSDF and I'm going to shift left click all these nodes within this decay shader. I'll press Control G and I'm going to come out and now you can see this has all been reduced into one node. We can go ahead and we can call this Decay Shader. We might want to have some control over the inside components of the shader. So I'm going to output the strength of the bump so we can turn on the bump when we want to. Another thing you might want to control is the scale of the Voronoi texture. So I'll plug that into the group input and I might as well plug the noise texture input in as well and just for luck we can add in the roughness too. So it's good that we've plugged all those in but we need to name them so we know what we're changing outside of the group node. So the first one I'm going to change to brick bump strength. For the second one I'm going to change this to Voronoi strength or you can call it crack strength if it's easier for you to remember. Then I'll set the next one to noise strength and we can leave this last one as roughness. Then when I go up you can see we've got our shader here and you can see it says BSDF and that just stands for bi-directional scattering distributing function. Now let's do the same for a couple of these nodes just to get some more practice. So I'll left click this node here and I'm going to shift select all of these. This here is what we use to make our gradient texture to switch between our brick shader and our decay shader. If you confuse this to what any of these things are you can watch the previous episode to get a better understanding but if you're just wanting to learn how to save your a certain amount of nodes as a preset in the add menu of the shader editor then you can just keep watching. I'm going to left click this and call it gradient. I'm going to take this location and take it out to the input since that was the thing we were animating and I'll come out and that's just finished this node as well. You will need to animate it again though since it's now acting as an input but we're not actually using this file anymore we're just using it to group all these nodes together. Finally I'm going to go ahead and group all these together so I'll drag and select all these and press ctrl G. Then I'm going to take my strength of my brick bump move it to there and I might take the strength of my other bump just in case I want to edit that as well. I'm going to name the first one to brick bump strength then I'll rename the other one to imperfection bump strength then I'm just going to plug in my brick one brick two and mortar into my group input so we can change them from outside I'll left click this arrow to go up and now you can see we've got our free shaders now if you want these changes to be made permanent in your file you can just save but some of you will probably want to save as just to make sure these changes aren't permanent so you can either save as or press save I don't mind so I'm just going to press save I'm also it's probably wise to name this to brick shader so I just left click this here and typed in brick shader so I'll save my file and I'm going to left click plus new to create a new file I'll press a to select everything and exit delete and I'm just going to make my workspace a little bit clearer I'll press shift a and I'll left click a cube just so I can create a new material and I'm just going to delete all those I'll press edit then I'm going to left click preferences and in the add-ons tab I'll search for node and make sure node presets is ticked then I'll left click the three bars and left click save preferences. Fortunately this add-on is free and built into Blender so you don't need to worry about downloading anything separate. Then I'm going to press file, append, then once I find my file that I just saved I'll double click it to open it then I'm going to double left click material and I'm just going to add this brick material. You can also add in the node groups separately. I'll delete my material here and I'll open brick. I'll go ahead and delete this mix shader and material output by shift left clicking them and pressing X. So all we have to do now is is save this file to a special location in the preferences so Blender knows where to find these shaders. So I'll press edit, open preferences, then under our node presets which we can search for in add-ons, I'll open this up and you can see there's a directory here. But before we can even do that we need to save our file. So I'll left click file, save, then I'm going to create a new folder and I'll call it node 
presets just so it's nice and easy to find and I'll open this up and I'll save this as node presets and press save blender file then I'll left click edit left click preferences then in add-ons I'll search for node open up this node presets drop down making sure it's enabled and in the directory node groups we're going to find our node presets folder double click it to open it and left click accept then we can left click the three bars and left click save preferences then when I close this I'll press shift a then under template you can see we've got a bunch of presets here you can see there's a few other ones from the three we have here and that's because these nodes have node groups inside them I'll press file and then save then file and then new and then general so the good thing about this add-on is whenever you change things in that file like you might want to add more node groups it will update it automatically as long as you save it but if you have any issues you can easily just choose the file location again you can also use the free guide accompanied with this tutorial to refer to whenever you get stuck. I'll press shift A, then I'll just left click a plane or something like that. And I'm just gonna change the studio mode, press plus new. And now in our example material, if I wanted to add our brick shader, I'll just press shift A. Then under template, I'll left click brick shader. So now we can access the shader in any file we want, old or new. And I'll plug in my BSDF to the surface here. And now we've got a working shader inside of a completely new Blender file. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I want to thank you so so much for watching and a massive thank you for everyone who's been following this course it has been a massive difference in my channel we've gone from under 500 subs to just over 900 subs in just over a month so i want to thank you all so much for your support if you enjoyed this course make sure to let me know and you can also provide any questions suggestions criticisms or anything you would like it's all very much appreciated thank you all again for your support and for watching and I'll see you all in the next tutorial. Take care.